Hi, I'm Charlotte. This is Time Mama Tries to Read. And I am here in a freezing cold shed. I have my hot cup of peppermint tea because I am genuinely <laughs> frozen. I can't have my fan heater on. Those of you that have watched before know that it makes too much noise. So let's do this. So this is my first Friday Reads. I've not done a Friday Reads before. Mostly because I didn't really understand what they were. Uh, it took me a while to figure out kind of what you were meant to fill a Friday Reads vlog with. Um, and also because I work most weekends. So if you're setting reading intentions for the weekend, it's pretty hard if you're actually going to be in work. Plus, not that I want to bang on the same old drum, but when you're a parent, um, weekends mean nothing. That does not mean you'll be chilling. Uh, talking about how it's raining outside, but you're all cutched up in your blanket and you've got Netflix on standby and a hot cup of coffee in your favourite book. I hate you, all the people that can do that. Um, yes, I used to be able to do that sometimes. Now, I have done some really good reading and um, I want to share it with you. It's kind of girl powery, hence my eliminate girl hate jumper. Um, I don't do much like merch but I do really like the um, brand that does this, so I will actually link them below, mostly because they're not a brand. They're a little teeny weeny family that live in Cardiff in Wales and their proceeds of their sales go to the Sepsis Trust. They also do my rather jazzy too tired mug and I just really love them and I've always bought stuff from them. So even though I'm against consumerism, <laughs> as my latest vlogs have shown, I know that some of you guys will be interested, so I will link it under me. Okay, back to girl power. What would the Spice Girls do? How the girl power generation grew up. Please don't turn off people that didn't like the Spice Girls. I'll just quickly say, this was a really good book. Definitely not something to read if you didn't like the Spice Girls, but it just reminded me how much power I got from loving them when I was young. So I was like a little bit too old to really like the Spice Girls. I think I was about 14 and it was definitely not cool and I kept it under wraps, but my whole bedroom was filled with posters all over the ceiling. Um, I couldn't afford to have bought all of the stuff that they sold. And Lauren Bravo, who wrote this, addresses the consumerism element of the Spice Girls. Um, she, she deals with that bit fairly well kind of gives it a kind of girl power slant of if they want to they should but I yeah I'm not massively comfortable with that side of them but the songs and how they were just brashy and you know they they were kind of they liked boys um but they weren't uh throwing themselves at boys and saying I love you please come back and all that kind of stuff obviously today and actually and actually she talks about how one of the songs they tried to make it more um, sort of gender neutral and not so specifically um, heterosexual. So there was an element even back in the 90s where they were trying to address that boy girl um, thing that was going on in loads of pop songs, which is still going on in loads of pop songs. So she, um, yeah, the kind of just to give you a brief run through, she goes through different aspects of, of what the Spice Girls may have taught us then and what we can take from it now. So it's, it's kind of frivolous, some of it, like style, you know, how they dressed and stuff. But some of it is um, about friendship, about confidence, about speaking out, um, about the women that went before them and the women that will come after them. And really, really enjoyed Lauren Bravo's take on the whole thing. It made me realise that I kind of want to put on one of their songs every morning to sort of just gear me up for the day and that I miss that, that just completely arrogant confidence that I, I, I had when I first liked them I was massively shy in public at home I was precocious and loud but at, anywhere that was outside of my house I just wasn't and liking the Spice Girls I think was actually key to me being more confident and I've now reverted back to that person again where I am insecure and an anxiety ridden and it doesn't come out really very I mean I've had a lot of practice of being quite bolshy so I think I still come off quite bolshy but I definitely don't feel that way inside so I kind of feel like I need to just go back and maybe put on their albums and do some dancing we'll see how it goes I've been teaching Idris how to do the high see ya bit of the dance in Spice uh, Up Your Life if he does well I will film that for you um, so now onto some literary stuff. This is Almost Famous Women by Megan Mayhew Bergman. And this isn't new new, so I don't know how many of you guys have already seen reviews from other booktubers. It's 2015. Let me just say, this is like one of the most astonishing books I've read in my life. And it's certainly up there on the short story top five. I mean, it's just, I can't quite 
describe what I felt when I was reading it because you're going into about a dozen different women's lives through um, Bergman's writing. So she picks these women who are almost famous. They were either very famous in their lifetimes for maybe a short period or within certain circles and then quite often they they fell out of fame and ended up living in a lot of cases quite quite frighteningly awful lives. Um, we're talking drug addiction, poverty, ill health, that kind of thing. So she goes, what really struck me, I think, was the variety of people that she that she delves into. Uh, the first set of stories is about Daisy and Violet Hilton. Um, I don't know if you can see the picture. They were conjoined twins um, and they, they didn't share any organs, but they shared a bloodstream. They were made famous in... in, in what could only be termed and what they term as freak shows but they but they they wanted to be dancers and singers you know they really wanted to do something with their lives and she perfectly captures this desire within them to be together and to nurture one another and also this desire to just cut themselves apart it was beautifully done and very very sad um then she goes into um person called a lady called joe carstairs Am I saying the name right? It doesn't sound right. And she was the fastest woman on water. And she was also an ambulance driver in the First World War. Her story intersects with Dolly Wilde, the niece of um, Oscar Wilde, who was also an ambulance driver in the First World War. And both these women are traumatised. And again, another thing that, that Bergman is bringing out is this idea of post-traumatic stress disorder from the from um, the war, where she automatically associate with a male soldier, especially from that period. But she's clearly saying, well, this you know, this is what it was like for women as well. Women were on the front line, involved in different ways. Yeah, she does it really, really well. Um, as I say, she's got Dolly Wilde. She's also got Allegra Byron, who was um, Lord Byron's daughter and who didn't didn't survive her childhood. Um, it's a quite an upsetting story, but again, amazingly done. Butterfly McQueen, who uh, was a maid on the film Gone with the Wind. Um, yeah, there's just there's just a real variety of women in this, and she does it all exceptionally well. She, it'll have you Googling to see wh where she sort of got some of her ideas from and then you'll want to find out what happens to some of the women. You probably even want to order some biographies because I definitely did, but what an experience. You know, I just, there's not often you read a book that you just, I don't know, that you feel that buzz afterwards. You know, you enjoy a lot of books, but they don't necessarily stick with you. But that one, that is going to stick with me. Okay. I'm also still reading, I've started reading, A Woman Looking at Men Looking at Women by Siri Hustavet. And after my last vlog, um, I have been very happily joined by um, Britta Bowler and by Shana Shani Reads. So we're doing little Voxer chats about it now. And um, they're coming from really interesting perspectives because Britta, as you can probably imagine, is a very well-read lady. And she's, you know, up on her European thinkers and philosophers and whatnot. Whereas I have always struggled with that kind of um, theory. And I'm really interested in it, but it just generally doesn't stay in my brain for very long. Um, I can remember the no plot of a novel for decades afterwards, but I can't remember theory for more than a week. So she's picking up on a lot of the things and understanding the context of some of the writers that Hustavet kind of just drops in. You know, she doesn't give a lot of um, description. She kind of assumes that as an audience, you're going to know. And that's partly because these essays, the ones that we're starting with at least, were written for quite specific audiences for either conferences, the openings of um, uh, new exhibits in art galleries, that kind of thing. So she's supposing that you've got some kind of knowledge already, which is great. I'm, I, I don't like being spoon fed. So in some ways, this is nice to be treated like a like an intellectual and then anything I'm not sure on I'm just googling and Sean's coming from a perspective of having studied art so she's much more clued up on the artists that are being mentioned um, I don't think she's having to do as much googling as me on the pictures that they're talking about um, and she's already got opinions prior opinions on some of the artists being discussed like Jeff Koontz who she really really likes and whereas I didn't really know who he was and was a bit unconvinced but she is slowly convincing me with pictures of dogs made of flowers which was quite cute um yeah it's 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 great it's one of those things where you're just this to me is like um 
an exercise class for the brain. It's like you've enrolled at the gym and you just want to stretch and just learn. And you might not be doing all of the moves right, but you do feel afterwards like you've done something, you know. And, and it is it is good to read. She's not, you know, she's not completely obscure. She she is, it is readable, but it, there's a lot going on. Um, and so now for the weekend. So I am actually working this weekend, uh, which doesn't bode particularly well for my reading. But I think it's going to be quite a chilled weekend when I get home. Um, Idris will hopefully have been tired out by um, Stephen. So um, hopefully he'll go to bed. He has not been sleeping again. Um, I know, call the police. Um, people say that when children are ill, they sleep. That is not true. Um, not for my child. So he's got a cold and he's not sleeping. Hopefully if he does sleep this weekend, I might get some evening reading in. And I've already, I'm coming up to like half, mm, no, maybe not halfway. I'm just over a third of the way through into The Mothers, a novel by Britt Bennett. Now I picked this up last year. And the reason why I started reading it now is because I've realised that really shamefully, I've not really read any women of colour this year. I've been trying to think about my reading list and it's just, well, it's definitely, if I have read a woman of colour or even or a person of colour, it's certainly one or two, if that. So I need to correct that. That's not where I was last year. I think it's because I've gone into my backlist and a lot of my backlist is stuff I bought years and years ago. Um, I wasn't particular, you know, I was... I was pro um, writing that was diverse, but in a very loose way. You know, I didn't particularly sort of enforce it in my own reading and I certainly didn't look for it. Um, if they were Native American, I looked for it, but that was just because that was my personal interest. So um, The Mothers by Britt Bennett is awesome. So far it's covering the topics of um, the loss of a parent and suicide and also abortion. So those are really heavy topics. I appreciate that they're not gonna be for everybody. And I'm not in a great space mentally, so it is a little bit of a tricky read for me at the minute, but so far she's she's dealing with it in an incredible way. And, and I'm just enjoying um, the writing. It's, it's very easy to read. Um, also, I went to the library. So, um, a bit of you, some of you seemed re really concerned about my la my lack of book hauls that I was talking about in my last video, and I know what you mean. I love watching other people's book hauls, so I was really um, touched that you felt you would miss mine. And when I did my last one, yeah, that was a good book haul. Like that was a diverse book haul, and I really enjoyed putting it together. So, I feel sad that I'm not necessarily going to deliver that now as frequently or at all but that doesn't mean I'm not going to have new books because you know it's my birthday coming up I'll have books as gifts for that um I'll be able to show them to you I'm also going to buy the odd book you know I'm not putting myself on a complete book ban I would like to do it but I just don't think it's feasible and already last week I got a book out from the library I read the first chapter it was a factual book and I knew that I would want to interact with it in a way that I couldn't with a library book I'd want to make notes I'm really into making notes in especially non-fiction books. I just find that I really connect with the text when I'm underlining, when I'm commenting, when I flick back through, I can see the bits that were interesting to me and I can reread them. I know it's controversial to write in your books, but I really do find that it helps me to absorb the facts. So I knew I was going to want to do that. So I sent it back to the library today and I've ordered it off of eBay secondhand. Um, so I will talk to you about that. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can see when it comes. Um, so there will be new books. And also I'll be going to the library as I have done today because, you know, some, my book buying habits were such that I was buying so many I couldn't possibly have read them. So in some ways going to the library and getting the stack out, even if I don't have time to read them, it's a similar... It's going to be similar content for you. It's showing you what interests me and what grabbed my attention. So I've come back with um, Too Fat, Too Slutty, Too Loud, The Rise and Reign of the Unruly Woman by Anne Helen Peterson. Um, I think this came out in 2017, so it's not new, new. Um, it's good news for me because if I really, really enjoy it and want to order it, it's probably out in paperback now, so that's worked out really well. Um, this has been set in really interesting chapters. I don't know if you already know, but she's um, separated it into too strong, too fat, too gross, too slutty, too old, too pregnant, too shrill, too queer, too loud, too naked. Those are the... Um, lists of chapters and then the women she's chosen for those chapters are Serena Williams, Melissa McCarthy, Abby Jacobson and Ilana Glazer, Nicki Minaj, Madonna, Kim Kardashian, Hillary Clinton, Caitlyn Jenner, Jennifer Ween Weiner, Weiner? I want to say Weiner but that sounds rude, and um, Lena Dunham. So yeah I think that's going to be really good. I like that she's chosen famous people because um 
despite trying not to watch too much TV, I know who everybody is in that list. I know far too much about the Kardashians for someone who doesn't like consumerism. So yeah. I also got out Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. I was super chuffed that I could even get this out since the booker list has been, uh, not the booker list, the Women's Prize for Fiction has been announced. I was expecting them to be completely out, but um, I got hot off the press that during the day they were announced, I went through the first few books on the list and we you know, weirdly and upsettingly, some of them weren't even in my local library. So um, I went down the list until I found one that was, and this was the first one to get a hit. So this is a retelling of the Iliad, I believe, or part of the Iliad. Um, I think it's more focused on the women, hence the silence of the girls. I'm always a little bit dubious about retellings of myths, in particular Greek myths. I just don't know if they ever really work. I've yet to read one that's really worked for me anyway. Um, and I've read the Iliad, I've read the Odyssey, so I feel clued up enough to approach it and hopefully be able to see what, what she wants to do with it. But Pat Barker is awesome, and I did not realise how awesome. I've never read her. Oh, look at the inside jacket. That's nice, right? Um, she was born in Yorkshire, and she began her career in her 40s. Hello, I like a writer who starts in her 40s. Makes me feel like it can actually happen to me one day. Um, and she took a short writing course taught by Angela Carter what i mean honestly can you imagine how chuffed it would be encouraged by carter to continue writing and exploring the lives of working class women she sent her fiction to publishers and 35 years later she has published 15 novels um and she's won the booker prize so i mean i don't think i knew any of that but now i do i love her even more so those i'm not going to get around to those this weekend let's be honest what i'd like to do is finish the mothers and then I think I will delve in the um, Too Fat, Too Slutty, Too Loud. And then hopefully by next week I might have started the Pat Barker. But it just depends on how much um, how much my child sleeps, as always. So I'm going to stop now because I am proper cold. And um, I'm going to put my fan heater on. Um, I was going to say uh, about the value of books. So I was going to film another vlog about the value of books. And I did film it. And it went really well but when I watched it back I just felt there were gaps in some of the things I'd said and because it's quite quite a um it's not a controversial topic but it's a topic that I feel really passionately about and I wanted it to go much better than it did I wanted it to include all the little things I thought of so I'm going to refilm probably not today I'm just not going to have time and not over the weekend because I definitely won't have time but hopefully sometime next week I'll refilm and I'll, I'm going to make notes so that it actually goes well. I know it's not often that I make notes, but I will. I will for this occasion. So, yes, we will have more discussions then because that's going to be a discussy kind of commenty type video, which I love doing because I love listening to what you have to say. But if any of you have read any of those, let me know. If any Spice Girls fans are out there, let's talk. OK, I hope you're having a lovely day and I will see you soon. Bye.